Hello everyone and welcome to another Tea Time with Chloe. I don't label them as that anymore, I just put a generic title, but we all know, all of you OGs know, that that is what this is. It is a Tea Time with Chloe. So I hope you've got a drink of your choice, maybe a snack, and that you're ready to chat. So today's video is a wedding Q&A. Um, it's the 3rd of September today, so in a couple of days it will be officially a month since we had our proper wedding. Um, and I asked for questions on Instagram related to the wedding. I think it was just a few days afterwards and I'm only just getting around to answering those questions now. Um, Will has taken the baby out for a walk, so let's dive in. Um, but I feel like I should give a little bit of background, first of all, to anyone who doesn't know the story of how we came to our wedding um, or anyone who's, you know, just finding my channel for the first time. Um, so hello, I'm Chloe. Uh, my husband Will and I live together with our little baby daughter Darcy and our two dogs, um, Archie the Yorkie and Margot the Miniature Dachshund. Um, we actually got married in August of 2020 in the height of Covid in a registry office tiny ceremony with just nine guests. Um, because we wanted to be married basically and um, we got engaged in August 2019 and our proper wedding got postponed but the date was meaningful to us so as soon as weddings were allowed again we booked ourselves a registry office slot and we got married on the date that we had planned just a tiny registry office ceremony um, with no party or anything a few of us sat in my parents garden um, and had cake and pims afterwards um, and it was lovely but we were financially tied into our um, big day so we moved it to April 2021 um, but come January February 2021 um, it became obvious that things still were not going to be normal by April so we were going to be paying quite a bit of money for a very very scaled back wedding um, but it was at the point where if we cancelled it, we would lose more money um, than we had left to pay, if that makes sense. So we decided to just go for it and we postponed it again to our second wedding anniversary. So on the 7th of August 2022, on our second wedding anniversary, we finally had our big day. I finally got to wear my dress that I'd bought three years earlier. Um, it was lovely. Like, almost the perfect day. Of course, little things went wrong, but it was lovely. I'm so glad we did it, but I'm also super glad it's over because planning a wedding is stressful, let alone over the course of three years, two postponements, a baby, actually getting married in the middle of that was a lot. So let's get into the Q&A. First question is, were you nervous on the day? And if so, how did you calm the nerves? Um, I was surprised by how not nervous I felt most of the day. Um, the morning that we had was so calm, everything was so chill until about half an hour before the ceremony and then it all sort of got a bit manic and stressful. Um, but I didn't really feel nervous. I think part of it was the people that I'd chosen to have around me on the morning. We had the wedding playlist playing, um, it was just a very relaxed atmosphere, even with two little babies with us. How did you balance the day whilst being a mummy? Um, I've paraphrased that question. Um, it was from a lovely lady who was basically asking, like, how do you balance being the bride and being a mum? Like, how did you keep an eye on Darcy all day? And that, for me, was the hardest part of the day. The hardest part of the day. Um, I have spent the last nine months being in mum mode. Um, Darcy is my full focus. She's still exclusively breastfed. She doesn't have a bottle. She's never had formula. She won't take breast milk from a bottle. Um, so I was breastfeeding her throughout the day, like in my wedding dress. I've got some beautiful photos actually. Um, but yeah, like I had to still be mum, even though I was the bride. And that was the most stressful part of the day for me. Um, I, anytime I was apart from her, I felt very anxious. I was constantly wanting to know who had her, who was looking after her. I had her myself a lot of the day. Will and I sort of passed her between ourselves. She was up 
during the ceremony with us because she shouted her way through the entire ceremony. <laughs> she even pulled out my veil. It was just, it was comedy. Um, but yeah, she took up a lot of my like mental space on the day as she does every day. Um, and she was quite overwhelmed. She was not her normal, super happy, smiley self. Um, because she was very overwhelmed. There were a lot of people there that she didn't really know. Um, obviously, it's noisy. Uh, during our first dance, she was absolutely hysterical. So there are some like gorgeous photos of us as a family, but I kind of like can't enjoy them because I know that in that moment she was hysterical. And it got to the point where as soon as the music stopped, I like raced out of the room to try and go and find a quiet spot to like comfort her. And everyone was treading on my dress as I was trying to leave the room. And I actually turned around and shouted at somebody because they stamped on my dress so hard. And to this day, I don't know who it was that I shouted at. And I spent the rest of the wedding reception going around apologizing to people in case it was them. And nobody said, it, like everyone was like, oh no, it wasn't me. So I shouted at somebody and have no idea who it was. And I'm honestly like, mortified it it makes me feel so uncomfortable because like there were some of will's friends and family there who i still don't really know and it could have been one of them and honestly i'm still mortified about it but anyone who's a mum will know it was one of those moments where i was like i need to get out and help my baby like i need to get out and comfort my baby it was just like this biological thing like i have to get out i have to get out i have to get out and like I was so stressed and everyone stamped on my dress on the way out and I just lost it. So there's a funny wedding day story for you. Was your dress off the peg or was it made for you? Um, so it was technically off the peg, um, as in I went into a shop and saw a sample of that dress hanging there and tried it on. Um, but then you order it in the size that you want and it's like made to order. Um, but no, it wasn't made specifically for me, it was, off the peg so to speak did you do anything differently compared to the first time um yeah the whole day uh, so the first time we literally just walked into a registry office basically said i do they didn't even do like a full ceremony or anything we signed the wedding register because back then you were still doing that whereas now you don't um and that was it we were done um so yeah it the first time it was literally just like the legal bit um whereas this time it was a full like traditional wedding um although having said that we did use a celebrant um and she delivered a personalized ceremony for us um which was tailored to us and about our love story and everything um so that was sort of like non-traditional i suppose what was the most exciting part of planning i think for me it was like one finding the venue when we finally, I say finally, we actually booked it really early on, but we did go and see a few venues. When we found our venue, that was like a magical feeling. We both just knew it was the one as soon as we walked in and we booked it in September 2019 and they hadn't even done a wedding there at that point. Um, and also I think when you just start seeing things come together, when my bridesmaids had their dress alterations done, it was the first time that we had the bridesmaids, flower girls and like Darcy and Thea's little dresses together in the same room and they just looked beautiful together and I thought yes like my colour scheme is working it looks good and um that was really exciting too. I have paraphrased some of these questions so I'm sorry if you asked them and I'm not asking like I'm not saying the full question but um I've just written down here, would you choose a different dress? And I think it's because I mentioned in an Instagram post that I didn't really like how my dress looked on the day. Um, and so I think people were saying like, what was it that you didn't like? Would you choose a different dress? Um, I don't know if I would choose a different dress because I do feel like I was going to be most comfortable in that style of dress. But I just feel like I got a little bit complacent with not really doing any exercise, not eating very well um, in the 
like the last sort of six weeks before the wedding and I just feel like it could have fitted me a little bit better and looked a little bit nicer on the day but I think if I rewound three years I would probably still choose that dress I still remember exactly how I felt when I saw it um the lady in the shop knew that that was going to be the one for me she picked it out she knew I was going to love it and she made me try it on last because she was so sure that it was going to be the one and she was right um, and I just remember how I felt when I tried it on. I was so happy that I'd found a dress that I felt comfortable in um, after some really bad dress trying on experiences. And so I think, yes, I would still choose that dress. Do you have any regrets or things that you're glad you did? See, this is really, this is quite a tough one because there's some things that I regret, but I think other people enjoyed. So for example, I regret spending I can't remember how much it was, I think £250. So I regret spending £250 to £300 on a photo booth because I didn't use it. I think I went in it once or twice and that was it. Um, but I know other people went in there over and over and over again. And like one of our nephews, for example, spent like the whole night in there. So I think some of our guests loved it, but personally, like I didn't really get to use it. So I kind of regret doing it. Um, but yeah, so it swings and roundabouts. If your guests enjoyed it, then it was probably worth doing. I do, and this is a strange one because I know that a lot of people will completely disagree with this. I regret getting a DJ because we didn't need one. Um, some places need one, we didn't. Um, our wedding was on a Sunday. A lot of people didn't get super drunk. Um, you know, it was only sort of closest family um, left over at the end of the night, pretty much just those of us who were staying over at the venue. Um, and I had hired a DJ kind of at the last minute because I'd had this panic that we should have somebody there doing the music. But actually the venue had like a built-in Sonos sound system and we quite easily could have just played our own playlist through that system all night and nobody would have even batted an eyelid because there wasn't loads and loads of dancing and um, the dance floor was also in a separate room so I, I probably spent about an hour dancing which you know for me with having the baby and stuff is quite a lot and I know my friends danced a lot and the kids loved it and there were a few songs where like lots of people came in to dance but we definitely could have got away with not having a DJ and that would have saved us £350. Um, I mean, to be fair, £350 for like five hours of DJ like time is pretty good. Like that was a good deal, but we could have saved ourselves the money. We didn't need it. What was your first dance song? So this was asked a lot of times. And our first dance song was by Thomas Rhett and it's called Die a Happy Man. We're big fans of country music and yeah. That song is just lovely. Um, another question about the dress was, was your dress your original choice? Yes, it was. That was the dress that I ordered in October 2019. And it has sat in my wardrobe, well, in my mum's house and then my house and then my sister-in-law's mum's house for the last two years waiting to be worn. <laughs> How many guests did you have? Um, so in the day, I think... All in all, we ended up about 70, not including our suppliers. Um, so, cause we also had like photographer, videographer, all that sort of thing. Um, I think we ended up about 70. We invited 75. Unfortunately, we had some people who couldn't come um, at the last minute. So yeah, I think about 70. And then in the evening we had more than a hundred, but I'm not sure exactly how many. My mum said, can we do it all again? <laughs> and I kind of wish I could go back and do the day again, um, but I'm also glad that it's done, I have to admit. Any suggestions of must do's? So this will depend on when you're getting married, but we had garden games. So our venue offered um, garden games as like an optional extra for a really reasonable reasonable price. And because it was a summer wedding, we were hoping the weather was gonna be nice and we had lots of children attending, we decided to go for it. And I'm so glad we did. So we had garden games like Jenga and Giant Connect Four, and then we had mini golf. And 
the kids loved it but it wasn't just the kids like there's photos of like my friends playing the mini golf um everyone loved it like it went down such a treat yeah so the garden games were such a good idea the kids literally just played with them all day it was brilliant um we haven't had our wedding video yet um but i would honestly say that a videographer is a must do if you can factor that into your budget um photos are amazing and we got our photos back literally within three days because our photographer is incredible shout out to you Steph but photos are amazing but there's nothing like seeing your family and friends moving on video and that's why even though my channel is literally dead I lose subscribers like on the daily it's com it completely fell off the algorithm when I was poorly and couldn't post like my channel will never be resurrected. It will never gain subscribers. I've made my peace with that. But this is why I continue to make and post videos because there is nothing like seeing your life moving on screen. And I am so grateful to have so much of my life from the last 10 years on video that I can go back and watch. And I want to be able to look back at my wedding day and actually see people smiling and talking and laughing and having fun and I want to look back and see Will and I walking down the aisle and having our first dance and do you know what I mean like I want to see it moving on the screen um and without being too morbid I guess and like trying not to get emotional there were people who should have been at my wedding who weren't there and I wish they were and I don't have any video of them from like recent years so everyone who was there I want on video and I want to have that clear memory for me to go back and watch because you can remember things in your head but they get clouded and also um, when you're the bride and groom you miss a lot of your wedding which sounds silly but you do you miss a lot of it so much happens that you don't see and so having a videographer means that I'll get to see a lot of those things. And for me, that is just a must do. Um, and I'm so glad that we that we did that and we worked it into our budget. And I cannot wait to get our wedding video. I just can't wait. How did you deal with the no shows? So there's nearly always going to be no shows at a wedding. And honestly, on the day, I found that it didn't really affect me at all because I was having a nice time and I just tried to let everything roll off my back. I was already, you know, stressed about trying to be mum and be the bride um, because everyone just wants a bit of you on the day when you're the bride. It's it's tough. It's overwhelming. Um, but everything else, I tried to just let it roll off my back. Um, but we did have some no-shows and after the fact, when I was thinking about it, it is disappointing. Um, I do think it's very rude to not show up to a wedding on the day um, without letting the bride and groom know um, or sending like a proper apology um, because obviously you pay per head when you have a wedding and... Um, even if it's too late to invite anyone else to like replace that person, it's polite to let them know. Um, we had about five or six people um, who didn't come in the end and two of them, I managed to find um, people who wanted to come to the day. We bumped up some people from evening to day guests, um, but the others, it was too late to invite anyone else and it is annoying because you do pay per head. Um, but you've just got to get on with it. Like there's nothing you can do um, unless you want to try and charge those people for not coming for their food. But who's going to do that? Nobody. Um, we just saw it as extra food for everyone else to eat because we had like a help yourself barbecue. So people not showing up is more food for everyone else. And lastly, what made you choose your venue? Um, so I kind of touched on it um, earlier, but basically... The minute we walked into our venue, we just knew it was the one. Um, it was beautiful. It was so bright and airy. Um, I just had really lovely, happy vibes. Um, 
we just knew it was the one for us. And like I said, over the course of COVID, they did loads of development there um, and renovation and it, it became even more beautiful if that's even possible. Um, it was the perfect venue for us. It just couldn't have been more perfect. Um, what we liked as well was that it was all in one place. So please don't take offense if this is what it was like at your wedding. But for me, when I go to a wedding, there's nothing worse than it being in more than one place um, where you have to travel between. And I know that that's always going to be the case when people get married in a church and that's completely like your prerogative. Everyone does what they want with their own day. But I personally hate it when you have to travel from one place to another um, or I hate it when it's like at one venue, but you're constantly shepherded from like one room to the next or you have to like wait in a certain area for this to be ready and yada, yada, yada. Like I just want to be at one venue and just chill and enjoy the day um, and that's what we had at our venue and I'm really pleased with that um, also at the time because they hadn't done any weddings yet and they were just going into it um, they were offering a fantastic like starter deal um, that gave us the use of the whole house we had all the bedrooms like it was just it was great um, so yeah all in all good vibes it was beautiful and it was a great deal and that's what made us book it so yeah that was my wedding Q&A. Um, sorry if I missed your question. I think I answered most of them. Some of them were like duplicates. Um, I was surprised that people didn't really ask about the postponements and stuff. I thought that's what people would be most interested in, like the process of having to postpone the wedding and stuff. But I guess maybe people have followed along with me um, and know all about it from when I've posted about it previously. But like I said, we are coming to the end of the wedding content now. I do have a like journey to our wedding video that I want to try and work on. And we will have the official wedding video at some point in the next few weeks. And then that will be it for the wedding content. And we will be back to regularly scheduled content. Um, although we do have some holidays coming up, which is exciting. So hopefully there'll be some holiday content and a bit of Disney. Um, but yeah. I hope you're all well. If you have any more questions, as always, leave them in the comments and I will try and get back to you. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys.